I, I would argue that this is an easy part, right? Of this course. isn't something that's going to tax your computer and catch it on fire. I was going to say, I was hoping you'd grab that mold file. And I want to, I know how long this part takes to verify master cam when it comes to hem stitching. It's a resource vampire, right? Yeah. Could you kind of show us a little bit of something like this and what it looks like in the real world? Yeah, certainly. And um, I'll just kind of load this up and we can see the numbers still cranking here, obviously getting, you know, loaded up. And then obviously I could try to, uh, to get it down to the end, of course, but I'm not going to make everyone wait here and, and, and watch this, uh, you know, do it on, on my computer. But, uh, but needless to say, uh, you know, the more complex of a part, I would say the, um, you know, more dramatic, you're certainly going to see those differences uh, between, again, as we saw, a, um, a two axis or, or maybe a simple three axis part, you know, certainly isn't going to take as long, uh, for instance, uh, traditionally, but maybe where, you know, you are getting into some of the heavy, uh, you know, other operations, 3D, 5 axis, you know, so be it. Uh, obviously, that's where it's certainly going to um you know, certainly change uh, how how that goes. Um, again, a very similar setup in, in something like this where we can go into the verify setup. I'll just simply make sure um, everything is uh, is good to go and we could then start up certainly that verification. Um, if we were to get that loaded up, right, we can see that uh, inside of the interface as well. Uh, we have our, our pretty decent, you know, high quality um, on as part of that. And then, um, and then in this case, right, I'm just going to go ahead and jump to the very end of the program and let that do its uh, its actual simulating um, of it. Uh, it is going to automatically go back through after it calculates and refine and try to clean uh, up the actual image itself. But then again, you can use your standard operations of you know stop conditions if it were to uh, detect a collision. Um, you know, your cross-section views, if you wanted to check anything, or in this particular case, a stock comparison. Um, this is a metric part, so I'm going to go ahead and change that to 0.1, for instance, um, and then we can kind of, again, see where things are at, specifically in uh, the radiuses that are going to show, uh, you know, additional stock being left over, of course. So we know... Uh... I appreciate you killing off the the verify on the other screen. We know that's a 17 minute verify. Uh, we we ran that. Yeah. So to do a quick verify, uh, I mean, I wasn't even. You were talking the whole time. It took like 20 seconds. So I mean, it, it doesn't look like it takes that long, and the resolution's pretty clean. Um, exactly. Are you able to? It, it's are you able to speak to like why that's the case? I mean, able to talk about the engine or, or why it's processing so much faster than other options yeah certainly so um yeah the engine of uh, our kernel simulation engine was actually developed in-house by our developers so i can't i uh, can't certainly take credit for it we got amazing amazing talent over there and they do a great great job at it um you know obviously a lot of uh a lot of our customers you know kind of come to us and say this is what you know problems we're we're facing and um and, and so we, we had the engine uh, built in with our editor uh, simulation kernel. Um, we felt it could be of, of use if we tie that within Mastercam. And then it's kind of best of both worlds, of course, um, either as a standalone product of, of handwritten G code, um, you know, or if, uh, if obviously, right, we can push it out from Mastercam and do everything within the interface uh, before the post-processing as if maybe that would take, you know, perhaps a, a few minutes to post out the code, of course, too. So, I, I would have taken credit for it. It's, it's pretty slick, but it's not. <laughs> it's not borrowed or leaked technology. It's developed by Simcoe specifically to solve a Mastercam verification or to improve Mastercam verification. Exactly. Yeah. Now, this this will also taking one step back. If a customer has a program that's written a hundred years ago by a mm -hmm. software they've abandoned and the guy that programmed it was 25 years ago and last time somebody edited it was 20 years ago, it's sitting in the control. What can Backplot do to maybe give those guys a little bit of confidence? I mean, they don't have a Mastercam source file anymore to, right. to go back and run simulation. Yep. I mean, they have an option with this as well, don't they? 
They do, yeah. So they could even just use it as a, a plain back plotter by itself and just take a look at what the actual plotted code is going to look like. Um, certainly, you could add in different stock and fixtures, you know, if you know what it's uh, what it's doing. Um, but otherwise, uh, we have a handful or quite a few customers actually um, that will take the plotted out code, save out that code as say like a DXF file or something that they could then use. Um, and more or less reverse engineer it, bring that into Mastercam, um, and then at least they can maybe then recreate a source file, um, you know, for that particular one uh, down the road. So, yeah, and I see a couple of our customers in the uh, the list here are currently using that feature. So shout out to Fluke Metals. But uh, you know, it's a good it's good to be able to take something somebody ran 20 years ago and to be able to know what it's going to do with some kind of confidence, right? Right. So. Right. 